No. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Hey everybody, it's Paige, and today is a very important day. Today is November 9th, which means that today I am filming my very first reading vlog, and I will be reading November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I am so freaking excited. I have been planning for this day for like two months now, ever since I got this book. I was like, I'm gonna clear my schedule, and I'm gonna read November 9 on November 9th. I'm not gonna do anything else today. <laughs> I actually do have some stuff that I have to do, like editing, um, but I'm going to read this entire book today, which is a pretty ambitious goal of mine because I've never read a book in one day, um, but since this book is about people who meet once a year on November 9th, I figured it would only be fitting. Now before we get too far into today's reading vlog, I wanted to mention a few very important things. The first thing being that today's video will contain spoilers, so if you have not read this book and you don't want spoilers, pause it right now, go buy the book, read it, and then come back and finish this video. Second, I do not know the age rating on this, but just assume that any book that is mentioned on my channel is 18 plus just to be safe. I also assume that since this is a Colleen Hoover book that there are going to be some sensitive topics in here, so trigger warning, look up the trigger warnings before you read any book. Um, I will have this book linked down below in case you guys are interested in picking it up. Obviously, you don't have to read it on November 9th. That's just what I'm doing. Um, but she just came out with a new cover, so you might see it look different. It's super cute. I'm definitely going to buy that book strictly for having both covers. It's like blue with a pink flower on it, I think. It's super cute. Um, but I will have November 9th linked down below. I will have my Amazon wish list linked down below in case you guys want to send me a book to read. Totally up to you. No pressure whatsoever. I will have my Goodreads linked down below, and then I will also have my Amazon storefront with like all of the books that I've mentioned on my channel so far, link down below. My friend Kristen is also vlogging her experience while reading this book. I know she's already got a head start on me. I think she's on like page 60 something, so I gotta get to work. I will have Kristen's channel linked down below. Go subscribe to her, watch her video, like her video, <laughs> leave a comment letting her know that I sent you. Um, she's a really good friend of mine and she just started a YouTube channel and I am so proud of her. She did so good in her first video, so go check out her first video if her November 9 vlog isn't up yet but hopefully it is anyway I'm sorry for the longest intro in the entire world if you guys are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's go ahead and get started here is a closer look at the book super super cute cover I'm not sure why they decided to redo the cover I think they said they wanted to make it like less seasonal like you could read it whenever um but I think both covers are super cute so yeah I'm excited also check out this bookmark that I got at books a million it is so cute it's like light pink and gold and it has this little ribbon I am so obsessed it was like four dollars so um that's my new bookmark so we are gonna go ahead and get to reading. I will read the back for you guys. This is literally all I know about the book. I know nothing else. So it says, you'll never be able to find yourself if you're lost in someone else. Fallon meets Ben, an aspiring novelist, the day of her scheduled cross-country move. Their untimely attraction leads them to spend Fallon's last day in LA together, and her eventful life becomes the creative inspiration Ben has always sought for his novel. Over time, and amidst the various relationships and tribulations of their own separate lives, they continue to meet on the same date every year, until one day, Fallon becomes unsure if Ben has been telling her the truth or fabricating a perfect reality for the sake of the ultimate plot twist. <laughs> Colleen Hoover's plot twists are literally the best. I am so freaking excited. Um, it says, can Ben's relationship with Fallon and simultaneously his novel be considered a love story if it ends in heartbreak? Which makes me so nervous because Colleen Hoover knows how to break my heart worse than anybody in this entire world. So, um, I don't know if I'm prepared for this. I just read Ugly Love and it was freaking incredible. I do think there's a small somehow like character tie-in from Ugly Love to November 9. I'm not sure who it is, when it happens, how big of a deal it is, but 
I saw on Colleen's Instagram story, she mentioned that you should read Ugly Love first and then November 9, even though they're standalone novels, it's just like you'll pick up on something subtle, I think. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start reading. So I don't know if this is technically the first page in the book, but it starts off by saying, first November 9th, I am translucent, aquatic. Drifting, aimless. She is an anchor sinking in my sea. Benton James Kessler. I have no idea what that means. I'm not good with poetry or whatever that is. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see what the first sentence of this book is. Colleen Hoover's first sentences are always like crazy. So uh, it looks like this is, is this a dual POV book? Did I like not know that? <gasps> oh my God. <gasps> it is. This is dual POV. This, I am so excited. Okay, well, anyway, the first chapter is Fallon, and it says, I wonder what kind of sound it would make if I were to smash this glass against the side of his head. Oh my god. <laughs> Colleen, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Oh my gosh. Already page two, I am interested. Actually, I was interested from page one, but like I already had a jaw dropping moment page two. Well, technically it's page four. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but it's the second page. Okay, anyway, she's like roasting her dad. Oh my God. This, I, I feel like, um, what do they call that? Like secondhand tension, secondhand awkwardness. Secondhand cringiness right now. Oh, she said, "You're impossible." Now I understand why mom left you. He gives his head a slight shake. Your mother left me because I slept with her best friend. My personality had nothing to do with it. <laughs> this book is insane. Oh my god. So she mentioned that her acting career ended when she was 16, and I was trying to figure out like why or like what happened. I was thinking maybe bad reputation, but now I see it's because of a fire that caused scarring down her body. Interesting. I am not liking this father character. Okay, so I'm in the car now, and that is because we actually have some errands that we have to run. We're at the post office, we have to go to Target, um, so I brought my book with me to read while my boyfriend is inside <laughs> running the errands for me. <laughs> um, I haven't even finished chapter one yet, I'm still at the beginning, I'm only on page 10. I, we were like on a time crunch, so um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and continue reading now. <laughs> So she just made eye contact with this guy at the restaurant and I'm guessing that this is gonna be Ben We haven't like met him, you know, or we haven't been introduced to him or anything But she made eye contact and he's staring so I'm guessing this is gonna be Ben. I'm like nervous I'm nervous for what the plot twist could be. I'm nervous for the um, heartbreak that is referred to on the back so uh, Jeez She pulls a strand of hair into her mouth. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever consciously like thought about like. <laughs> this is making me so sad. It says, I used to be confident, but the fire melted away every ounce of my self-esteem. Oh my gosh. The like double meaning kind of, I don't know if it's double meaning, but like the fire reference melting away her self-esteem as it melted her skin. Ooh, that sounds terrible. But oh my god, I feel so bad. She records audiobooks. That's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever read. No, I've definitely never read a book where someone had a career in recording audiobooks. But I don't. I I never even thought of that really as a job. Like someone's got to do it. <laughs> okay, I'm back home and oh my gosh, Ben. <sighs> Sorry, I'm late, babe. I literally 
this makes me so happy like i <laughs> i'm so happy right now oh oh my god oh i don't want my ladybug running off to another city but if it means she's following her dream i'll be the first to make sure she's on her flight ladybug what a cute nickname i i want to be called ladybug that's so cute okay so the oven just preheated <laughs> I'm gonna put my pizza in and then back to reading. I'm on page 20 and I I can I can tell I'm gonna be able to finish this book today. I love Ben already. He's so amazing. I love him. I I love him. So I finally finished chapter one and so far I'm loving it. The next chapter is from Ben's perspective, so I'm really interested to see like what he's thinking, what his intentions are, why he chose to do what he did. Hopefully it explains that, but um, yeah, I feel really bad for Fallon and I I really dislike her dad. Like I would say I hate him, <laughs> but I just, I really dislike him. So I just finished reading chapter two, which is Ben's first chapter and I love him even more. <laughs> I am so happy. I have like butterflies reading this book. It's so freaking cute. I love the dynamic between Ben and Fallon. I love Fallon's personality. I love Ben's personality. I love this book. I'm 37 pages in and I love this book. I just got to the quote that her mom said that says, You'll never be able to find yourself if you're lost in someone else, which is like the quote at the top of the back. And I feel like that's like such good mom advice. <laughs> um, and I like the tie-in because I was wondering like what that context was. Okay, I'm going to read until I come across something that I feel like I need to address. <laughs> but I need to get into this book because it's already, let me see what time it is. <laughs> it's already 4.30 and I'm only 40 pages in. So I'm gonna try to get a chunk done. I'll mark things that I want to talk to you guys about, but we'll see if I can get a good way into the book. Okay, so the scene in the closet. <sighs> wow, that was pretty intense. I, didn't know what he was doing but honestly i feel like ben's heart is so pure but at the same time he kind of like lied to her or like omitted information about his biggest regret so i'm wondering what that was like what does he regret so much also he just went back to his apartment to shower because he's taking fallon out on a date and um his roommate was saying like you know, I know where you were last night, but they don't explain where he was. So now I'm like interested in what that is. And he's like, I'm fine. Like this time is different, but it's like something he said over and over again. So I'm wondering what he's referring to. I have no idea where he was or where he could have been. Um, I wonder how old he is because Fallon's 18. So I wonder how old how old he is. I, I would assume he's in college because he said he was taking a creative writing class or something, but maybe that was just a lie. Who knows? I'm excited for their dinner date. I'm gonna be really sad when she leaves. Hopefully they don't like spend too much time like during the time that they're apart. Like I just want to know about Fallon and Ben and I think I like Ben Ben's chapters a little bit more than Fallon's. I like both of them. I just I don't know. I feel like usually I like reading the guys chapters better just because it's interesting to get like a different perspective on things. Ben and Fallon's first kiss. That's all I gotta say. I'm currently on page 68, still on the first November 9th. I'm hoping that it automatically skips to the second November 9th. Also, I'm getting like more and more worried about what Ben is hiding. So hopefully it's nothing too bad, but I'm a little bit nervous. Actually, I'm a lot bit nervous. <laughs> Okay, so I just got to the part where they're making a deal that they're going to meet once a year on November 9th, same place, same time, but they won't contact each other for the rest of the year. 
and Ben asked about like being monogamous and she was like no like we just need to live our lives like you know how we would but then we'll also get to see each other so it's like the best of both worlds but then he says but what if one of us falls in love with someone else won't that ruin the book if we don't end up together in the end and then she says whether or not the couple ends up together at the end of a book doesn't determine whether that book has a happy ending or not as long as the two people end up happy it doesn't really matter if they end up happy together and this is stressing me out because I feel like this is foreshadowing of how the story is gonna end up because he promises to write a novel about their relationship and like the whole meeting once a year and that's like what this book is so I'm scared that they're not gonna end up together in the end I hate I hate it but I love it at the same time I'm so stressed I I seriously love Ben so much he is one of my favorite guy characters in a book like he's so sweet and like genuine and I can tell he really likes Fallon like right away but he definitely has some stuff of his own that we don't really know yet which again <laughs> nervous to figure out what that is but oh my gosh I wonder when the next chapter <gasps> oh okay so I'm almost on the second November 9th I have like a couple pages left okay thank god so it just automatically picks up where it left off before like or like you know it automatically picks up on November 9th the following year I was worried that I was gonna have to like sit through and read about them living like separate lives but I'm happy that I don't have to do that so I'm gonna finish reading the first November 9th then I'll come back we'll we'll, we'll chat um but yeah I am such a happy ending person so if this doesn't have a happy ending and a happy ending for me is Ben and Fallon ending up together and being happy together. So if that doesn't happen, I'm gonna be so upset. I'm probably gonna cry in this video. <laughs> it's getting pretty late. It's already six o'clock and I'm on page 73 and this book has, oh gosh, I'm like scared. I like, oh man, I don't wanna accidentally read something towards the end of the book. Um, that's the acknowledgments. So 307 pages, so. 100 pages is about a third, so I'm almost a third of the way. I wonder how many... Oh, it probably goes through all five years, doesn't it? <gasps> okay. I'm nervous. I'm nervous, you guys. I'm so nervous. <gasps> oh my gosh. I, I just turned the page, and then he says, What if we fall in love with each other before the five years is up? I hate that my first thought is how there's no way he'd ever fall in love with me. I don't know what I grow more tired of. The scars on my face or the self-deprecating thoughts in relation to the scars on my face. I dismiss the thoughts and force a smile. Then, of course you're going to fall in love with me. Hence the reason for the five-year rule. We need firm guidelines so our hearts won't take over until you've finished your book. <sighs> I hadn't read that part yet, so. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I wonder, like, if what I'm reading right now is Ben's book. I mean, obviously it's like by Colleen Hoover. Well, it is by Colleen Hoover, not quotation marks. But like, is it is it Ben's book? Like, am I already reading it? And like, this is him telling the story of the first November 9th? Hmm. I wonder, cause she's like, you gotta fictionalize our story. So am I reading the fictionalized story or am I reading the actual story. Ugh. I, this book is so funny. Like, there's so many, like, laugh out loud moments, and I love that. You don't find that with very many books. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's no way. There's no way. Is he gonna do it? <laughs> he just dropped her off at the airport and left with, like, a little emotion, and she's, like, kind of upset. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do the 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 last minute Fallon <laughs> the last minute security airport kiss that he talked about oh no she talked about it is he gonna do it I'm I'm so scared I really hope he does it <laughs> he's doing it oh my gosh the slow motion run I had to create angst so I could try to make this kiss a 10 the feels <laughs> I love that the feels
<laughs> she only rated it a nine, of course. A solid nine, a solid nine. We'll take it, we'll take it. Aww. She said it really was a 10. And now we're on to the second November 9th. Okay, I'm, I feel like the first November 9th was very successful, very cute. I love it. I'm in a very good mood, even though I'm like, like I wish, you know, they could have just like instantly fell in love and lived happily ever after. I'm very happy with how things are going. I'm smiling. I can't stop smiling. I feel like hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully we continue on this path for a little while longer because I'm not ready for my heart to be broken yet um, But let's go ahead and read the next little like poetry blurb. So it says Her tears and my soul they live parallel lives Run ache burn repeat her tears and my soul They live parallel lives Benton James Kessler I don't know what that means. This is why I don't like poetry. Not that I don't like it. Well, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of poetry because I'm not good at analyzing it and figuring out what they're trying to say. Like, I kind of need it to just be, like, said, like, straight up to me for me to comprehend properly. But <sighs> moving on to the 2nd November 9th. Okay, so I think I just got to the little, like, crossover or, like, mention of character from ugly love they just mentioned miles and when ben said he had an older brother who like wasn't there half the time i was like i bet he's a pilot and that's gonna be the connection and sure enough his older brother ian somehow knows miles and he says miles took today's runs for me so i could get here sooner whether it's supposed to be bad tomorrow and i didn't want to get delayed so <laughs> i don't know if that's the entire um like mention or like crossover <laughs> I was hoping for more I knew it was gonna be small but still I freaked out when I saw the name Miles because if you guys have read Ugly Love you know <laughs> you understand um, and if you haven't read Ugly Love you need to read Ugly Love it was a five star read for me so far every Colleen Hoover book that I read has been five stars this is my sixth one I think and she's just so amazing so um I'm gonna keep going I'm on page 109 so I'm about a third of the way done <laughs> um and yeah we're still on the second November and he's like meeting or she's meeting like his family right now I guess so back to the book wait I'm confused is is Ian the pilot Oh yeah, Ian's the pilot. Okay, so Ben has two brothers, Ian and Kyle. <laughs> I was really confused. <gasps> oh gosh, Kyle says we need to talk. I wonder if they have like pre-existing beef and what's going on. I feel like, hmm, hopefully he's not mad at him for having fallen over. So they mentioned that Ben's mom died. I don't know how yet, but like what happened to the dad? Like where's his dad? Because they said that the siblings inherited the house once their mom died. So I wonder if the dad is in the picture. <gasps> oh my. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I felt like iffy about Kyle. Wait. I'm so confused. Isn't Kyle the brother that that Jordan is marrying? Right? And Kyle's the one that just punched Ben? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so confused. Hmm. I wonder if that was about Fallon or something completely like unrelated. But we're moving on to a Ben chapter, so hopefully we can get some more insight. Page 
That's all I gotta say. <sighs> okay, 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 so, um, I had a really bad headache and I decided that I needed to take a bath. But I wanted to keep reading, so I brought my book with me. And I was just like, oh, I'll just film an update when I'm done. Um, little did I know that the 3rd November 9th, wow, what a chapter. First, Kyle, when, when, he, when the waitress came up to Fallon to say he said this was an emergency, I thought it was going to be a joke. Like, I thought he was messing with her, like, you know, basically doing what she did to him, but then he was going to be, like, standing outside. That's what I thought was going to happen. But, Miss Colleen, when you think you know what's going to happen, it doesn't happen. I should have known better. <sighs> I definitely shed a tear or two when I read about Kyle and thought about, you know, Jordan, his wife, the pregnancy. Wow. And and I, I kept reading. I kept reading. And then and then Tate shows up. And or not Tate. <laughs> Fallon shows up. Tate also shows up with Miles, which I thank God there was more to that because I was like a little bit sad that there was such a slight mention of Miles. But Tate and Miles show up which is absolutely fantastic. I love that they're there. I love that. I'm so happy I read Ugly Love first. Even though it's still small, it, it's it's more than I was expecting. Um, but Fallon shows up. She's there for him. And then page 157, he says, well, actually 156. He says, you're a virgin. And then 157, he says, I don't want to be your first Fallon. I want to be your last. <laughs> My heart. I literally read that line. <laughs> I pulled the drain on the bathtub, threw on my clothes. My hair is still wet. And I plopped down here so that I could talk to you guys because I don't want to be your first Fallon. I want to be your last. I can't. Ben. Yeah. <laughs> The, the love, it's love, the love that he has for her. All right, let's, let's keep going. I take in a quiet rush of air as his words sink in. He's not even kissing me and those words just made this moment a 12. <laughs> I touch, it, touch his cheek with the tip of my, tips of my fingers and smile up at him. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm gonna freaking cry. I want you to be my first and last. <gasps> I'm not okay. I'm not okay. And things are looking too good right now. They're looking too good. I'm scared. Oh no, I can't. I can't. I'm so emotionally invested in this. I can't handle heartbreak right now. I can't do it, Colleen. Please spare me. Yesterday evening when he opened the door and I saw him for the first time in a year, I could see the pain in every single aspect of him. It was like the death of his brother aged him five years. But right now, he looks somewhat like he did the first time I saw him. Unkempt and scruffy. Adorable, beautiful. It's the most at peace I've seen him since I arrived. Oh no. Jordan doesn't want to move back to Nevada. So that means Ben's probably not going to move to New York. Ugh, I knew it was too good to be true. I freaking knew it. Oh my god. No, it's not going to happen. And he has an agent. He didn't tell her that he signed with an agent. I'm scared. She wants them to finish the arrangement, but like... What if something happens between now and then? And like, what if they don't like... <sighs> I'm scared. I, I can't be scared though. I just have to keep going. I'm over halfway done. I'm on page 165. So I'm about halfway done, but over halfway done. 
man moving on to a Ben chapter I think this is the last chapter yeah this is the last chapter until we get to the 4th November 9th no 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 Fallon you're done you're done Fallon can just Ben deserves better I'm so frustrated. I feel like this is like a debatable topic though. Fallon wants Ben to be there for his family and thinks that he's just making an irrational decision, but all Ben cares about and wants, well, obviously his family, but is Fallon. And he wants to fall in love with her. And she's just like, oh no, we have to stick to the rules. Mm. I'm so upset. I knew it was too good to be true. I freaking knew it. Oh my gosh, I'm so upset. It says, another tear falls, but this time it falls from my eye, meaning Ben's eye. I take a step back and I let go of her. When she climbs into the back seat of the cab, she rolls down her window, but I won't look at her face. I stare at the ground beneath my feet, waiting to see if it will split in two and swallow me whole. The one thing I want more than anything is for the whole world to laugh at you, Ben. I can hear the tears in her voice, and they can't do that if I don't do for you what you did for me the day we met. You let me go. You encouraged me to go, and I want the same for you. I want you to follow your passion instead of your heart. No, uh, we don't need that. The cab begins to back away, and for a split second, I think maybe she'll realize how effed up her priorities are. Aww. He said, she's my passion. The book was just an excuse. And that was the 3rd, November 9th. And next we have the 4th, November 9th. This, this year's poetry says, In her darkness, she is silent. In my darkness, she screams. Benton James Kessler. Starting off with Fallon. <laughs> okay, so I'm reading uh, the 4th November night, and um, I'm scared. They so just met at the restaurant. Ben brought his nephew Oliver, and I'm I'm scared. Like he's not upset at her. He's not mad. I'm waiting for some news to break. Like he has a girlfriend, or maybe he's with Jordan now. I don't know. Is that weird? That's probably really weird. But I'm really scared that something like that is gonna be said. I'm so so scared. But I only have like two pages left of the Fallon chapter, and then we get Ben's perspective. So yeah, <laughs> I'm scared. I'm just gonna leave this recording in case I have like some crazy reaction to what happens. Okay. <laughs> no. No. This is exactly what I did not want. I freaking called it. I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen. Oh, I'm so mad. I'm so mad right now. Oh my god, I'm so angry. Now we're on the Ben chapter. This isn't how I meant for her to find out. I was going to tell her in soon, but I wanted to ease into it. Not that I expect her to be heartbroken over the fact that I'm dating Jordan. In fact, I thought the chances of her being happy for me were greater than the chances of her being upset by it. I never expected this reaction from her. Why is she acting like she cares so much when she made it clear last year that she wasn't interested in anything more than the arrangement we made? <laughs> oh, 
I literally want to tear my book in half right now. I'm so mad. Now I'm mad at Ben, <laughs> but I can't be mad at Ben because Fallon just left. Like, what was he supposed to do? She just told him. <laughs> I can't even talk. I feel like, what the heck? <laughs> I'm recording myself cry by while I'm reading a fictional story. Um, but she said, surprise. <laughs> well, he asked her why she was had a car because she usually takes a cab from the airport and she said surprise i know she said i moved back surprise <laughs> this wouldn't be so bad if there wasn't a baby involved but the fact that he's with jordan and jordan had his brother's kid and he like is treating it like his son now like that's what makes this a million times worse and like what makes it too late wow i basically just cried the entire fourth november 9th now we've got the fifth november 9th okay <laughs> okay <laughs> this freaking book okay i have hope again <laughs> she's at the club with theodore she stood Ben up at the restaurant, um, which I guess she said she wasn't coming, so she didn't really stand him up. But he's asking the questions, and he's like, "Do you you don't believe in soulmates, or do you believe in soulmates?" And then Theodore's like, "No, do you? Like, have you met her? Like, are, is she here with you?" And then he says, "She's not here with me. In fact, I was actually stood up by her today, waited for over four hours, but she never showed." His words are like icicles, beautiful and sharp as a knife. I swallowed a lump in my throat. He actually showed up. Even after I told him last year I wasn't coming. His words are doing too many things to me right now. And it feels all wrong since I'm sidled up. Sidled up. S-I-D-L-E-D. -E sidled. Sidled up next to a guy I wish would stop touching me. What girl is worth waiting four hours for, Theodore says with a laugh. Ben leans back in his seat, but I'm eyeing his every move movement. Just this one, he says quietly to no one in particular, or maybe his words were only meant for me. Speaking of Amber, or maybe I wasn't speaking of Amber, I can't really remember now that- Okay, I'm back. I had to go get a new memory card because <laughs> this one literally- Where is it? I ran out of space, so I had to get a fresh memory card. Um, okay, where was I? Um... Speaking of Amber, or maybe I wasn't speaking of Amber, Amber, I can't remember now that Ben is here and my brain isn't functioning properly, but Amber is back. My eyes grew wide when I look up at her. Wow. She's looking between me and Ben like one of us is a mirage. I totally get it because I feel the same way. Might just be the alcohol though. I shake my head and widen my eyes to let her know not to acknowledge that she knows Ben. Hopefully she understands my silent instructions. Okay, I'm gonna continue reading now. Okay. Fallon said, are you still with her referring to Jordan? And he says, you know me better than that, Fallon. If I had a girlfriend, I certainly wouldn't be standing here trying to convince, conv trying to convince you to come home with me. Oh God. <laughs> I'm not ready for, for my hopes to be built up again, just for them to be crushed and taken away so this better be it for good but we literally still have like a hundred pages left so this can't be it like it can't be 
my camera battery is about to die again so I'm gonna cut recording and then I will check back in with you guys when something crazy happens <laughs> I'm back with a pillow and a blanket and um, <laughs> I gotta say, love, love Glenn, love Amber, <laughs> love Ben for sticking up for Fallon when freaking Theodore insulted her. Um, I expected Ben to punch him, but then I didn't expect Glenn to also punch him. <laughs> Him. And then I also did not expect Amber to take her shoe off and throw it at him, but it was pretty epic. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Now they're on their way back home, I guess, to Ben's place. He says he's going to fix it. Um, I'm nervous to read, like, what happened, like, you know, what happened with Jordan. Like, how did he go about that? But I think I'm about to find out because... It says, it's the explaining that I'm dreading. <laughs> we still have at least a 15 minute drive, so I decided to go ahead and get started. So, here we go. Oh boy. He said, basically, I need you to be quiet because I'm gonna say some things that you probably don't wanna hear. This is so frustrating. I, like, I can't imagine being in like Fallon's position where Obviously, she loves Ben, and Ben loves her, but Ben gave himself to Jordan and, you know, took Oliver basically as his son, and he ended it with Jordan, but, like, I feel like that, like, taints the relationship now. Like, he just said he still gets to see Oliver every single day, but that also means he's most likely seeing Jordan every single day and I feel like that would bother me <laughs> and that's probably like me like thinking selfishly because like I'm not in that situation but I feel like that would really bother me like I don't know if I could like put myself through that like knowing that he would be seeing this woman that he like was with for like a long time that's tough. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's tough. He said, it's a, loving me back is a huge responsibility because, because Oliver is going to be a part of my life forever. And I'm not talking like an uncle and a nephew, but like he's mine. Birthday parties and baseball games. And then she says, loving someone doesn't just include that person, Ben. Loving someone means accepting all the things and people that person loves too. And I will, I do, I promise. Dang. That seems like, like, that seems like that would be, like, such a difficult thing. But I guess, I guess when you love someone, like, I don't know that you look past it. But, like, you learn to accept the way things are. I don't know. Ugh. That's rough. I feel like that's... I mean, it seems like it would be a difficult decision, but she doesn't make it seem like it is. <laughs> like, considering how sh hurt she was after finding out about Jordan, and now she's just, like, ready to, like, be there with Jordan and Oliver being, like, a part of his daily life, as if, like, that's his son. I got respect for her, <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to say. November 9th. Oh boy, by Benton James Kessler. Oh boy, is she gonna read it? Is she gonna read it? Is he gonna be mad at her? Oh boy. So I just turned the camera off because I was just sitting here reading, but then she found the manuscript. <laughs> and um, she's about to read the section about what happened with Kyle why he punched Ben and I thought I would record in case it's insane. She doesn't think it's about her, but I feel like it might be about her because he mentioned something um, earlier, like when it happened, saying like, I wonder how much she heard, like it couldn't have been much because she's still here. So either it's about her or it was like really, really bad. So I'm nervous. 
<sighs> I'm nervous. I got like halfway through the page and now I'm confused, so I'm gonna have to reread this. Maybe he won't remember. It's been so long now and we've never talked about it. I take a deep breath and head back into the living room trying to hide the panic. He can't ruin this for me. He says, I want to reassure her that everything is okay, even though it's far from it. That's what he says about Fallon when she first met him. Like, she could tell that something was off with Kyle. No, no, it was Ben. He started the fire. I feel like my whole life is a lie. It's all a lie. I am on a roller coaster of emotions. I think a roller coaster might be not a, not even like a good enough description of how I feel right now. Oh my. <laughs> Oh my god, she thinks it's fake. <sighs> She's gonna read more of the manuscript. So his mom died on November 9th? But didn't she say that Dylan Thomas, is that is that the, the guy who also died on November 9th? Isn't that right? Is that... Is that who she was gonna take him, like, to see the exhibit for? I feel like it was. Dylan Thomas. Yep, it was. So Dylan Thomas died November 9th. His mom died November 9th. And he intentionally started a fire that almost claimed the life of the girl who would one day save his. I'm scared for when Ben, like, wakes up and, like, confronts her. Or, like, if that's gonna happen. <sighs> oh my god. She's so afraid of him. I would be too. Like, how do you know what's real? What's real? What's fake? What was, was it all just for a stupid book? I feel like it can't be. I hope it wasn't. He's wanting to explain, so I'm, I'm hoping that there is some reasonable explanation, even though I can't think of a single one right now. And just like that, we are on to the 6th, November 9th, which I did not expect to happen. Nope. How many ups and downs are there going to be in this book? If I get my hopes up one more time, I'm done. I'm going to stop reading. <laughs> if things are good, I'm not going to finish the book because I can't deal with another heartbreak. I've My heart's already been broken like four times in the last couple hours, so I'll update in a little bit. Okay, so her mom read a bunch of the manuscript and basically is telling her she needs to read it. So, Ben's novel, chapter one, November 9th, age 16. Oh boy, I'm, I, I need to know what happened with this whole um, fire thing. But I feel like there's gonna be some sort of explanation because the mom didn't seem angry which if there wasn't an explanation, like the mom would definitely have been angry. So here we go. <gasps> oh my God, Donovan O'Neill. <sighs> oh my God. Chapter two, age 16. When one burns one's bridges, what a very nice fire it makes. Yikes. Just a little update. My plan was to finish this book on November 9th, but I had a little bit of a late start and it's 12.31 a.m. So technically it's November 10th, <laughs> but I'm still, you know, I only have like 30 pages left. So, um, you know. I read November 9th on November 9th, <laughs> um, but holy crap. I'm on page 270 and um, we're finally getting to read more of the manuscript and what happened. 
and we basically just saw the whole fire thing play out and that's crazy we're back to fallon now she says i barely make it to the toilet before i throw up beads of sweat trickle down my forehead i can't do this i can't read anymore there's too much too much and it's too hard and i'm too sick now to keep reading pretty intense stuff i have like mascara like dried mascara all over my face from crying i haven't cried recently but just from crying earlier so anyway i'm going to finish up the book oh god there's only 30 pages left for them to get back together if it's gonna happen so mm. kristen just found out that he started the fire <laughs> she just texted me <laughs> oh gosh plot plot twist <laughs> jeez where's the girl the face oh there it is <laughs> i was looking for the face bomb emoji i feel like i've like done this so many times today while reading so anyways um this is insane she blamed her dad this whole time and like presented him and hated him because she thought that it was his fault which i mean he's not the one that started the fire but <sighs> chapter three age 16. oh i wonder how much of this we're gonna read i'm nervous i think there's a typo it says I think about this for a second about how neither of them lives here. Ian is in flight school. Ben just started college. My mother is dead. But Ben is the guy. So I think they mean Kyle just started college. But it says Ben just started college. See right here? Ben just started college. I think I just found a typo. <laughs> I wonder if that's fixed with the new cover. I'm interested. We're about to read the letter to my boys. No. 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 That's where he was the night before, even the morning that he met her. He was with Jordan. Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> Thank god. Thank god. They didn't do anything. Thank god. Wow. I was about, I was, I, I was about to freak out. <laughs> I was about to really not be okay. My hair gets crazier and crazier <laughs> with each check-in. Oh my gosh, what the heck. Um, well, I'm on the last chapter. It's a Ben chapter. Um, I just finished reading the notes. Um, and, you know, the, that Ben left, uh, like, midway through the ma manuscript. And then we have last November 9th. I don't know if that means the last one or the previous one. <sighs> There's five pages left. I'm not ready. I'm so scared. I finished. It's 1.28 a.m. on November 10th. And I finished. Five stars. Five stars. Miss Colleen Hoover, she does not disappoint. I'm, it's probably gonna take me some time <laughs> to mentally digest everything. It's crazy how loud vehicles can be. I don't know if you guys heard that, but, um, wow. That was incredible. That was freaking incredible. If you guys have read this, let me know your thoughts down below. If you have not, why did you watch this video? But also, you need to read this. Freaking incredible. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to go to bed. <laughs> um, 
I love you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy. Let me know if you want more reading vlogs. I'll probably do them anyway. Maybe not all in one day though because that was a lot. This is the first time I've ever read a book in one day. So that's pretty big. Um, so yeah, anyway, I love you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.